I want you to go to Matthew chapter 5 and I'm going to read I'm going to read these three verses to you tonight I had every intention to um, preach bipolar faith disorder to you um, today. I had every intention to do so. However, um, <laughs> however, with the recent events that has occurred and what's going on in our land, I wanted to talk to you tonight a little bit to meet us where we are. Is that okay? Because I know a lot of us in the room and, you know, just reading social media. I tried to stay off of it, but, you know. Preach. Oh, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. I, I just looked at people's comments and and the different things, and I just want to talk to you guys tonight. Is that okay? Yes, sir. So if you have it, um, I want to read these uh, three verses, and we're going to go there from there, all right? You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Verse 14, I'm gonna key your attention. Say this out loud with me, all right? You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. I didn't hear all of you. Come on, lift your voice. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Look at somebody and say, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. I want to talk to you from a subject tonight called Believers Arise. Believers Arise. Believers Arise. Um, with all that is going on, with all that is transpired within our land and in our um, nation, uh, uh, God has led me to share this message with you on tonight. Because uh, if we can be honest, many of us have heavy hearts coming in mm -hmm. this Sunday, okay? A lot of us are fearful and worried about our lives, especially um, those in, within the African-American community, okay? So we have all of this stuff going on, and it seems like we're being, it seems like the African-American community, especially the men, are being targeted, Okay, and we have all of this stuff going on in our world and and people are scared. You see, I've been seeing posts like, oh, I have a boyfriend. I have a I have a son and I have a father and like what's going to happen if they get pulled over. Uh, but I want to let you know tonight. That's not the only stuff that's going on. Okay, right. if we want to go deep and further with what's going on in our community, there is a problem that is within. Come on, somebody. And the problem that is within is that you should <laughs> the problem is within is that. For me, let me just speak for myself. I'm worried that a person of my own skin complexion is going to fire off a bullet more than I am afraid of actual law enforcement. Because if we look up and see what is going on in our land, ladies and gentlemen, there is a problem that is within. And in order for that, in order for it to be solved, we must deal with what the root of the problem is. Yeah. All right. We must deal with what the root of the problem is. And, 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 and a lot of us are afraid that we, we're supposed to have people who will protect and serve. And it seems like it uh, seem like we may not make it home from, the, from both sides. But I come tonight to tell you that the fight that we are facing, ladies and gentlemen, is not with flesh and blood. Yeah. Because I also want you to, I want all of us to be aware tonight of one thing. I do not want you to be distracted. Yeah. All that you see that is going on is nothing but a distraction. Yeah. And what you are seeing on the surface is a byproduct of the elephant in the room that nobody wants Come to on, speak Brad. about, and that is sin. Yeah. At the heart of the matter, it is not about black and white. At the heart of the matter is sin. Yeah. And so if you can't deal with a spiritual problem with natural thinking. Say that. Yeah. You cannot handle a spiritual problem with, with natural schemes and gimmicks to think that it's going to cause a 
change overnight. Say that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, all of what's happening is the devil is distracting us and having us uh, look on what's at the surface and deal what's on the surface instead of getting down to what the root of the problem is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Matter of fact, let me tell you tonight that Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 uh, verses 19, 19 through 21 and I'm just paraphrasing for you ladies and gentlemen that envy, malice, hate are all byproducts of sin. That is the that is the spirit of the flesh. Envy, malice, and hate. And guess what? It is not God who tempts anyone to do evil. There is an adversary, and at the head of it is Satan, the devil himself. Yeah. 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 Do you want to know what causes an officer to get all mad and begin to take out his frustration? It is he is being tempted within his own lustful desire to want to do harm to another person yeah. that the devil then works on and tempts him yeah. and then they make a choice yeah. you want to know what makes a person come up and was in a household of faith and begin to kill yeah. those yeah. who are who had nothing to do with it it is evil that does that yeah. and it is caused the, from the oh my god it is caused from sin yes make it you are to be giver of light mm -hmm. Not only a receiver. And see, ladies and gentlemen, we live in a society to now that we are all worried about ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. We live in a selfish uh, generation, whereas though as long as I got mine, I don't really care what happens with anybody else. Amen. Hallelujah. And because of that, darkness has spread. And the enemy is having his way on all of our community streets. Because, because there is no light. Pushing it back. Come on. Oh my goodness, there's no one in the gap pushing it back. And the contrast in the Bible to darkness is light. And the light is the forgiving, merciful power of Jesus Christ in someone's life. And so, if you root out, you can only take out hate with the love of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That is what happens within a person's life. Jesus says that we are the light of the world. He is distinguishing us from a believer and an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look up in the further verses, he says that we are salt. That in other words, salt is needed because we are in a world that is decay that is decaying and it is rotting and it, uh, it is rotting. And guess what? We are salt. And one of the characteristics of salt is that salt person. Uh, it, it's a. Uh, uh, it, it's a. It, it's a. It, it's a person. It, 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 it's a preserver, thank you. I couldn't get that P word out for nothing. <laughs> it's a preserver. So it preserves it. Guess what? This world could be would be even worse without believers being on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say that. Yes. Wow. Yeah. We are in the age of grace. Mm. We are in, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the timeline, we are in the church age. And so as long as the believers are here, the world will only get so bad. But while they think this is hell, you haven't seen nothing yet when believers then vanish and gone. Yeah. Because when we are raptured up, the world will begin to experience seven years of tribulation, and then you will see real hell on earth. Oh, nobody preaching this. Uh, everybody want to preach and tell you that everything. Let me tell you something tonight. That in order for you to realize what time, you got to know what time we're living in. Yeah, come on, because if you want to address anything, if you really want to make a difference, you got to know, you got to be able to perceive what time we're living in in order to give answers to people who have questions. Right. Yes. Come on. People are having questions. What in the world is going on in our world? What in the world is going on in our land? And guess what? Light is needed because the world is in darkness. Right. Yeah. The world is in darkness. Jesus gave us a great responsibility he, because he took the title of being the light of the world. Jesus said in John chapter 8 verse 12 he said then Jesus spoke to them again saying I am the light of the world he who follows me shall not walk in darkness but have light have the light of the world that what distinguishes you that you are light that is the distinctive quality of a believer is that you are salt and that you are light but what does it mean when we have a lot of Christians who are lukewarm mm -hmm. yeah. come on come on Whoa. You cannot save anybody or change anything being like something that you are trying to change. Right. Yeah. Mm. yeah. What difference?
difference does that make? Where is the real transformation that happens? Wow. Because what has happened is that we have allowed our light to go dim in this society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have not only allowed it to go dim, but some people have turned their light off. Yeah. <laughs> and because they turned their light off, darkness is even spreading within the house. Come on. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about what's going on in the world. I'm talking about what's going on in your wood, your neck of the woods. Yeah. I'm talking about what's going on in your house. I'm talking about, because if you're dim, then everything around you, you can't really see. You can't really see. <laughs> Make because a have yeah, you yeah. ever woke up in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. And you had to use the bathroom. <laughs> I know, I know, I didn't go all the way. <laughs> there is in our in our house there is a, a iron board, and if the if, if the iron is still plugged in, I my my room is right next to that, right? So you know how you gotta use the bathroom? I got to the bathroom, I tripped over the cord because it was dark. <laughs> <laughs> because you know what light does? Illuminate. It illuminates. Yeah. It exposes what is there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Uh -oh. All right. oh my God. Yay. It exposes what is there. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Good. Look yeah. at what's going on. That's if good. your light is not brightly yeah. shining, Come on, Brandon. then you can't expose the darkness that is within it. What is going on in a judicial system and what's going on in our in our government is we don't got enough bearers of light in those positions. Yeah. Right. 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 God help me in this room tonight. And if they are bearers of light, their light is not turned on. Right. Yeah. Or it's them because they don't they don't want to make a difference. They just want to sit there and take up the taxpayers' money, but they don't want to do nothing about what's going on in these streets. I'm telling you tonight, I'm turned up so heavy that you're going to have to find me tonight. Because what you see that is going on is that what is going on is that the believers have head hid behind the wall. They've hidden and we have secluded ourselves. We have secluded ourselves. We have became isolationists. Oh my God. We've secluded ourselves. Oh, we see what's going on in the world. Oh man, as long as it ain't happening here. Right. Come on. I'm alright. Jesus. Right. They can kill somebody else on their own time as long as they don't hurt my family. Right. <laughs> oh, y'all know y'all. <laughs> Come on, talk back to me in here tonight. Right. And so we, we, we have hidden. Guess what? We live in a culture today, ladies and gentlemen, that nobody knows how to communicate. Right. And so all you see on social media is people trying to take sides and, and are arguing, Come bickering on. over Facebook and trying to get their point across. Come but on. nobody wants to sit at a table because we are all sitting behind a computer and that's not what gets things done. On, oh my God, I feel like preaching in this house tonight. It don't get anything done on a social media. What really gets things done is people coming out of hiding, coming out of seclusion and get into the matter of what's going on in the world. If you want to see transformation happen in your house, then it starts with you shining a light. Come on, Brandon. Come out of your seclusion. Come out of your isolation. Preach. We live in an isolation. The church, I'm just dealing with us. I'm not, I am not pointing fingers tonight. What I'm dealing with is letting us be reminded of our responsibility as Christians, all right? Who we are are to be light. And what has happened is that the answers to what is going on is Jesus. But if the answers to what's going on is Jesus, and we are supposed to be the people who are supposed to be carriers of the gospel, then how, how in the world is any change going to happen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most people will be like, okay, prayer is cool, Jesus is okay, but I don't think we need to get to the tape. We need to... Yeah. The power of prayer has the ability to do more than what you can do for yourself. Say that. Say that. Because if you don't have prayer within a movement, what you what you tend to do will fail. Mm -hmm. yeah. It will fall to the ground. Yeah. So it is not that we just pray, but we are praying as well as moving to hear the voice of God mm -hmm. to then act upon a situation that we can answer questions in an intellectual way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with this. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's with this. Yeah. The gospel. You want to know what brings 
<laughs> what brings the darkness exposed? It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You want to know what brings people out of the? It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And guess what? When they, when people who love darkness, they will stay in the dark and they will run away from you. Yeah, that's <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna pause right here for a second. This ain't even in my notes. But guess what? We got a lot of dark. We got a lot of dark. Some of us got a lot of dark people. We hanging around. Mm -hmm. And guess what? They're not trying to be in the light. <laughs> what they're trying to do is dim your light so it can be better to hang around you. Yeah. Right. Come on, Brandon. Jesus, I pray you in this room tonight. You don't have to talk back to me, but I talk for myself. You got, you got a whole lot of people hanging around your circle who ain't enough light bearers. And because they're not that, now you are dimming your light in to try to fit in with them and do what they're doing. And guess what? Your life is getting miserable. And you're trying to figure out what in the world is going on. You may not want to watch who you got yourself hanging around in. Come on in this room tonight. You are the light of the world. You are distinguished from all the rest. The Bible says, come out from among them. Be separated. Yeah. It is not telling us to be separated from the world. It is telling us that our characteristics and how we handle ourselves should not be as of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the only way you can let your light shine is being out in the middle of darkness. Yeah. Yeah. There's a difference. Jesus, everybody wants to talk about Jesus sat with sinners, but he didn't do what they did. Say that. Make it plain. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't do what they did. You talking about he sat around sinners. That's right. He did. He had compassion for them. And because he had compassion for them, he ate with them. He talked with them. But he did not do as they did because he was talking to them so they could come on his level. Right. Amen. You're dealing with too many people in your life who are in darkness. And guess what? If they're not trying to come to your level after a while of you continuing to share, then you got to keep it moving. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And see, everybody want to talk about Jesus was loving. But Jesus also told the disciples when he gave, him, gave them power, he said, if they don't receive what you got to say within a city, then you shake the dust off your feet and keep it moving. Yeah. Uh -huh. Come, on. Come on, somebody tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you're going to do anything, you have to be light bearers. You have to come out of your seclusion. You have to come out of your isolation. Jesus said that we ought to be a city on a hill. Believers live in visible lives that attracted attention to God's work in a believer's life. Luke chapter 11 verse 33 would say, No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lampstand that those who come in may see the light. Yeah. That those who come in may see the light. They don't put it under a basket. They don't hide in a secret place. Yeah. So what if they want to call you a holy roller? Oh well. Oh, well. You know who you are. Yeah. You know you like to have fun still, but do it in a way that is not a contradiction to the word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on in here tonight. You can't be worried about what other people got to say. If you know your truth and your truth is rooted in this, I'm then that's all that matters. Okay. The Bible says in Philippians 2 verse 15 that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Crooked, perverse generation. You see what's going on? Mm -hmm. But you are light in the midst of that. You are light in the midst of that. And the purpose of light, of us being the light of the world, is the, Jesus says, is that, that they may see the good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That they may see your good works. Let me talk to you, brother. Good works, you're not saved by works. You feel me? You're not saved by your deeds. Say that. All right? You can do so many good deeds, it don't matter. If you don't know Jesus and Jesus is not in your heart, I'm sorry to tell you that hell is your home. Right. I'm not trying be to be, um, I'm just trying to be honest. You're not saved by works, you're saved by grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But works are the proof of your salvation. Right. Yeah. Fruit. Mm -hmm. right. You got to bear some fruit of your salvation. Some people are just comfortable with being saved, but they don't got no fruit mm -hmm. to back it up. Say that. Let me tell you something. In heaven, there, there are crowns to be given out. Reward. Mm -hmm. There are rewards yeah. to be given out. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I want every reward there is because yeah. I want my penthouse to be really nice. <laughs> 
Y'all can speak for yourselves. Mm -hmm. But I want the flyest shoes, the flyest white room. You know? <laughs> Y'all can do what you want to do. I know what I'm going to do. But ladies and gentlemen, your works are evidence of your salvation. Mm -hmm. It's evidence of your faith, man. So if you're going to really be about anything, then you got to do it because guess what? And do it in a way that's humble. Yeah. What is your good works? What is that? What are some of the things? What are your gifts in the room? Shout it out to me. What are something you good at? Encouragement. Huh? Encouragement. Serving. Serving. Mm -hmm. Like what do you do? What do some of you all do with your hands? Cook. Cook. Hair. Hair. Makeup. All you know what that does? People will think that, oh, that don't give God glory doing that. But yes, it does. Yes, it does. You don't have to be a preacher to give God glory. Amen. You don't have to be one of the singers you see here to give God glory. We give God glory through many ways. By reaching out a helping hand to those who are in need. Yeah. Yeah. We give God glory in many ways by giving encouragement to someone who may be down. Yeah. We give God glory in so many ways by doing, by, 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 by just being a listening ear for somebody. Mm -hmm. We give God glory just in our gifts and, and, and through our talents. The Bible says, and I believe Colossians chapter 3, that in everything you do, do it for the glory of God. Yeah. Because when your light is shining in darkness, when somebody sees that, hey, man, I'm a dope cook, I, I do, I'm a dope makeup artist, and I'm doing this all for the glory of God and not, and, and not compromising my faith, yeah. that is what gives God all of the glory. Amen. Let me tell you something now. I don't care if, let's say, for instance, Stephanie decided that she wanted to sing R&B. I would be, as long as you ain't Make it compromising right. your faith, it's all good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Because guess what? Everything you do, you do for the glory of God. Amen. And by you being out there, you are showing you I'm not compromising myself. I'm not going to talk about the things that other people talk about. And vulgar, oh my God. Have you yeah. heard the music out here these days? Goodness. Yeah. I'm not going to do all that. All right? That's giving God glory. As long as you ain't compromising your faith. Are you feeling what I'm saying Amen. tonight? Yeah. It is letting your light shine. I'm trying to show you different ways how you let your light shine. How you be about that life. <laughs> All right? Mm -hmm. That's what you are. That's what you do. Some of you are, you can design, have a graphic designer, design anything. That's what you do for the glory of God. That is your purpose. Your purpose is what shines a light in the midst of this dark world. Mm -hmm. People, especially in our generation, have to see things like this. I'm a young guy, pastoring this church. Yeah. We're about to do this every Sunday starting September 4th. Not a lot of people see a young man or see young people coming together to start such a movement that is going to go beyond what we can even ask, I mean, be, oh, well, yeah, ask or even imagine. Let me tell you something, you are part of something that even what I say that we look at what we see now, let me, I will guarantee you, I'll put this on everything, in six months, when this thing is up and running, you will see a whole complete difference because you know what we're doing now? We're trying to empower people so that you can be light bearers to then attract other people to, to the household of faith. Amen. That's why you have to be here when, uh, on, on Wednesday night because you get empowered through the Holy Spirit let you know who is behind all of this. That is what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So, 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 how do we let our light shine to affect change in our communities? Number one, let me give you this. We must be authentic with our witness. Amen. All right, we must be authentic. All right? Authentic. Genuine about our witness. We can't be like everybody else. We got to be our, our, authentic, our authentic selves. I can't be like you. You can't be like me. I got to walk my walk. Guess what? The Bible says in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2, that you are, are an epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. You know what a city on the hill is? A city on the hill is meant to be visible. It's almost like anybody in the room has ever watched The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Yes. And you can see the land of Oz yeah. from afar. And 
and it attracted you to it because there was a yellow brick wall. It was bright. It was shiny. And the building itself where ours was was bright and shiny. You know? I said a yellow brick road. I didn't talk about the actual building, not the place. <laughs> Let me give you another one. You see, when you uh, have anybody ever been on the ocean and you can see a light pulse? Mm -hmm. It attracts you to it to let you know that you're not too far away from land. You must be authentic. You must be doers of what you preach. Mm -hmm. What turns most people off? Come on. Come on. What turns most people off is that you are a Pharisee. Mm -hmm. You can point out things in others, yeah. but you don't deal with the little speck in your eye. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, tonight. You can point it out. But you're not walking the same thing that you're trying to tell others to do. Right. Say that. And it is not telling you that you ought to be perfect either. Yeah. I'm not telling you that. Right. I'm telling you, you, we all are going to fall Absolutely. short of the glory of God. Right. Pastor has fallen short of the glory of God in times of his life. Yeah. As of everybody. Yeah. But you know what you do? You get back up from where you are yeah. and continue to do unto the Lord what you were supposed to do in the first place. Right. You learn from your mistakes and you keep it moving. Yeah. That is what's being authentic about your witness. Mm -hmm. It's being true about your witness. Let me keep it moving because I'm almost finished. Number two, watch this. Is we must be intentional about our witness. Yeah. Acts chapter three. I mean, Acts chapter thirteen, verse forty-seven says, "For so the Lord has commanded us. I have set you as." A light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Other lights do not need light. It is the people in darkness who needs it. So us staying behind this wall and mingling with other lights, it ain't really doing anything for people who are in darkness. We stand secluded. And us, uh, we stay secluded and being in isolation is not what's helping. We have to come out from where we are and be intentional about our witness. Amen. Intentional about sharing the, the gospel with Jesus Christ. How did you hear of the gospel? How did somebody invite you to church and, and, and you gave your life to Christ? Because they were intentional about it. Mm -hmm. right. We must be intentional. Number three, we must be willing. We must be willing. And this is the part right here. God is looking for willing vessels he can use. Yes. Isaiah chapter 8. Uh, in Isaiah, no, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. God asks a question to himself. God sat among himself. He talked to himself. He talked to the Trinity. That's him talking to himself. So I wish I had um, myself was in three. Or like... You know, we have one of those projectors where I could be right here and right here and, you know, I could talk to myself. So, you know, what happened was God talked to himself and this was in Isaiah and, you know, God showed um, Isaiah what it was all about, right? So, he had a conversation and he let, he was sitting on his throne one day and um, he was talking to, Jesus, you know, talking to the son and he was just talking to the Holy Spirit. He said, hey man, and then his self said, hey, and, um... He was like, so who shall go uh, before us? That's a very good question. I don't know. Who shall we say? And Isaiah, after seeing the glory of God, Isaiah said, I'll do it. Isaiah is only the one of few I've seen out of the Bible who just willingly said yes to the answer of God. Mm -hmm. If you look in the Bible, there was not many people saying yes on the first time. <laughs> And there was not many people saying yes on the first time and saying, hey, I, I'll do it, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, you know, Moses came up with some excuses. I think Jonah just got on a boat and said, hey, man, I'm out of here. He went the whole other direction, got on the boat, ended up saving those guys' lives, and they actually, you know, confessed Jesus Christ, I mean, as their Lord and Savior, and after they threw him off of the boat. Uh, they tried to save him, but, you know, God don't play that. And so, you no, know, you're going to toss him over. And, uh, you know, a whale swallowed up Jonah, big fish. And he was in that belly for three days. Mm -mm -mm. That's interesting. <laughs> ah, 
There's so many other people in the Bible who did not, you know, just give in the first time. Like, it, it, took, it took a while of convincing. But Isaiah just willingly said, here I am. Send me. And God is waiting for people who are just willing to say, here I am. Send me. I don't know what you want to do. I don't know all of what you got planned, but... Send me. I'm willing. I'm willing to make a difference. I'm willing to make a change in my community. And guess what? I want you to see something in the world. In the, in the word of God, he said, a city on a hill, that you are a city on a hill. And guess what it also said? A lampstand in a house. What does that mean? That he goes from talking about a city. No, he goes from saying that we are the light of the world, then saying we are a city on a hill, and then what he says next is that a lampstand and a house. You don't got to go far with affecting change. You can't change somebody else's household if your household messed up. That means that where am I supposed to make a difference? I'm supposed to make a difference at my house. Yes. Yeah. God, I praise you in this room tonight. I'm supposed to make a difference in my house. That's where, in my house, in my world, wherever I am, I am a carrier of light. Amen. And because of that, that's where I make a difference. The world is my place. Wherever I occupy is where I'm supposed to make a difference. Right. Guess what? You ain't going to do nothing. You are not going to make a change if all people see when you go into work. I know you hate going to work, but come on, you got to keep in mind who you are, who you're dealing with. You come in work all just dragging like, oh, God, I don't even want to be here. Jesus Christ, help me. I hate this place. <laughs> hey, good morning. It's not a good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> and then another bubbly person. Hey, you want some coffee? It's Monday. <laughs> <laughs> it's Monday. I ain't with all that. You can't do that. How are they going to see the light shine if you're not happy about, you know what, I'm going to come in here. I know I ain't going to be at this workplace long, but while I'm here, I'm just going to make a difference while I'm here. Amen. You say hello. Hey, hey, how you doing, man? You know, just do that when you get to your desk. If you have one of those little office desks, just do that when you get there. But when somebody sees you, be like, hey, how you doing? You know? I'm just saying how, how our demeanor is and how we carry ourselves matter. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is what matters. Nobody will ever see Jesus and want to serve the God you serve if you're always walking around with your head held down. Mm -hmm. Be glad you got a job. Amen. Be glad that you got some money Amen. that you're not broke. Amen. I'm, I'll be glad about that. I'll take all my pennies I can get. I know I got one section over there. Thank you. <laughs> I take my little <laughs> I take my points. I don't care. I will take what I can get. Because guess what? You gotta you gotta remember, and this is a sidebar, this is good extra information. Where you are is not your final destination. Right, right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to remember where you are is not your final destination. It's only a pit stop until where God is taking you. Hallelujah. It's only a pit stop. You're only chilling there for about a second. For about a second, and you're gonna keep it moving right there. Yeah. All right. So don't get, don't get. I know your situation may be hard, maybe a little tight right now, but just persevere. It'll be all right. Amen. Amen. It'll be all right. Look at somebody say it'll be all right. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Yeah. You believers, we have to arise. Come from where we are. All right. Mm -hmm. Come out of our seclusion. Come out of being isolated. If we're going to make a difference, let's bring somebody to the household of God. Yeah. Let's minister to them where they are. Let's tell them. Let's go, let me tell you something. It is just not always in the spoken word that you minister your faith. It is how you live out your life. Amen. 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 It is how you live out your life. You are a living epistle. How, you, how, how God is writing your story on your life will be able to inspire someone for God to write their story in theirs. Amen. 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 Let me tell you something. You are not the author of your story. Say that. God is the author. Yes, and guess what? He has the whole book written. <laughs> yeah. But guess what? There's detours in the book sometimes because of our own doing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, you are, if you arise from where you are, watch what we are able to do. The answer to this world 
is in the hands of the believers of Christ. So what are us as Transformation going to do? Stand your feet. What are we going to do as Transformation? What do we have a plan? Right now we've reached out to uh, Cradle Rock Elementary. And we've reached out to a youth center in Wild Lake. We're planning a revival. Hopefully, um, revival weekend would be August 13th and 14th. We're trying to secure a Saturday where we can be able to have community things as a way of this small, because this is our first time out, it's going to be small, but we're going to invite a whole lot of people. It's going to be games once we can secure a place for that Saturday, and we'll let you know. But we already taken action amongst ourselves. I've already started training the, the team and the staff on Wednesday nights to be empowered so that we can continue to make a difference. And um, that's what we plan on doing through Takes One to Reach One, our initiative, school adoption, feeding the homeless, mentor programs. Because we just don't want to, we just don't want to meet a, uh, uh, we don't just want to be a, a church that meets the symptom. Just for a moment. We want to develop something that will have a bigger impact on a person's life. That okay, we just met a need for a second, they're hungry and stuff like that. Let's, let's educate them. Let's put them in a better home so they can get off their feet if they're willing to do so. There's a plan that is in motion. And I'm trying to tell you, it's the same thing that God can do for you.